25 minutes past the hour. This is the Craig Folly Show on WDET. Thank you so much for being with us. And again, thanks to all of you who have stepped up and made pledges in support of this program and this radio station. It does mean a whole lot to us. We really do appreciate it. Whatever you can afford is all we can ask for here at WDET. Just go to WDET.org to make that pledge or call 800-959-9338. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. All right, we're going to spend a little time right now talking uh, about sort of a potential problem with the mortgage crisis. We've had a number of homes that have been foreclosed upon. Many of them sit vacant for months and months at a time, finally going up for some sort of an auction. They've been sitting vacant for a long time. Many times the heat's been off. Some of the houses have been stripped. You get into the house, maybe you get a great deal on it, but there could be an unexpected surprise, and it comes in the form of bad air quality. My guest right now is Connie Morbach. She's an environmental scientist and indoor air quality expert with uh, Sanitaire Incorporated out of Clawson. Connie, welcome to the Craig Folly Show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Okay, how common an occurrence is this when you've had a house sitting vacant for a long time that, that you get problems with air quality? Unfortunately, it's very common. Uh, we find many hazards that can um, impact indoor air quality. Some we can see and some are hidden. So give me an idea of what it is we're talking about. One could see maybe mold building up if uh, there's inadequate uh, you know, moisture removal in a house. Uh, but what else are we talking about here? Well, the mold is probably one of the most common, but what causes the mold is the water damage. So many times there is an underlying structural problem associated with the water damage also. Uh, secondly, a common hazard we find in homes built before 1978 is lead. And if that lead is disturbed and not controlled, we can have uh, health issues, neurological problems with young children. Also, uh, many of the homes have asbestos in them. So those are three common hazards that need to be addressed in order to avoid impacting air quality for many years to come. You know, it seems one of the real dangers, too, especially in, in a city like Detroit, is a lot of people have been in and have been taking things out of these homes when they're vacant. They've been stripping the homes, taking out some of the piping, whatever they can get. You mentioned asbestos. There's a, you know, I have an old home that has pipes wrapped in asbestos, and my inspector said, don't touch it. Don't disturb it. You'll be okay. You don't have to mess with it. But as soon as somebody gets in there and starts ripping out pipes, then that stuff becomes airborne and becomes a problem. Do we have a lot of instances where that exactly has happened? Yes, that is very common. Uh, we, we call it the rip and run, where the, the pipes have been ripped out. The asbestos has been disturbed. Many times we have a, a double whammy hazard. Um, we have water damage onto the asbestos wrap around the pipes, and the asbestos is often hanging, which means it's now friable and can get airborne, and both the, the mold has Hazard and the asbestos hazard needs to be addressed. And because asbestos is a regulated substance, that can get very costly in the mitigation if it has been spread throughout the home. And that's one of the things that you're suggesting is buyer beware here. Uh, if, you, if you are looking at a house saying, wow, the bones on it are good uh, and I'm getting a place for thousands and thousands less than I would have been able to in any other sort of market, but um, people don't often consider what they're going to be dealing with if they actually want to close on this property. Oh, yes, and I see so many young couples get excited about the house. And in some cases, the the hazards have been covered up, uh, sometimes knowingly, sometimes I believe the... Um, it's not known, but it still is something that needs to be addressed, and it can have a future liability if someone is planning on buying the home and fixing it up and then selling it. That uh, can produce a liability for them it, because they're not disclosing unknown ha hazards. <laughs> My guest right now is Connie Moorbach. She's an environmental scientist and indoor air quality expert with Sanitaire in Clawson. Um, one of the things that, that home buyers rely on is an inspector to fill them in on all the potential hazards that they may be dealing with. Give them the real lay of the land when it comes to purchasing a house. Do you find most of the inspectors, though, are trained to look for this kind of stuff? Or do they look for this kind of stuff? Well, the, that's a tough question. It, it, Sometimes they do. Oh, yes, because I don't want to paint with too broad a brush when it comes to home inspectors, because I've had a couple of very right. good ones. And there are some very, very good home inspectors. My recommendation is always to choose a home inspector independently with 
uh, referrals from someone other than the realtor because uh, <laughs> it seems like sometimes they don't want to recommend the deal killers. I think that goes with appraisers and, too, right? Yes, that's yeah. very okay. true. But another issue is that the home inspectors are generalist. They're have been, they have been trained in many different areas from heating and cooling to electricity, to, uh, plumbing, and they're not necessarily aware of many of the hazards, especially if they've been covered up. So my recommendation is to make sure that in addition to passing that general inspection is if there are concerns because the house has sat for a while or it appears to have been freshly painted and everything might be covered up is to contact an indoor air quality company that uh, 350 to 600 dollars that might be spent can save tens of thousands of dollars and health um, issues that might be associated with it. So again, buyer beware seems to be the key on this. I mean, if somebody does buy a home and they find themselves in a situation where they uh, some of this was covered up, I mean, is there usually a, a legal remedy uh, that somebody can collect from the seller or the bank perhaps that was selling this foreclosed home? Uh, if indeed there's some evidence that this information was was covered up? Most of the time not, because the disclosure documents are generally filled out by someone who has lived in the home. So if the bank has it or it's uh, uh, it's gone into foreclosure, probably there are no legal ramifications. I'm certainly not an, at- an attorney, but in my experience is, is that they don't have an obligation to disclose that if they haven't lived in it. However, if an individual buys it and they fix it up and decide to rent it and they become aware of those hazards or if they sell it or rent it, they can have a liability for either tenants or uh, purchasers of the home. Ah, interesting. And I've got a ton of attorneys listening right now. So if you've got a little more insight on that, feel free to leave a comment on our Facebook page. But Connie, thank you very much for coming in to tell us about this today. Connie Morbach, an environmental scientist and indoor air quality expert with Sanitaire and Clawson. We appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you so much.